The movie opens with a help me sign floating in the middle of a vast ocean and something that looks like a letter written on a plastic cup on a small desolate island. A very nervous man, Hank, sets himself up on a rope to hang himself. He's standing on a cooler and about to jump off and end his suffering. But something keeps him standing because he's still not sure about what he is doing. But then he spots a body of a man in the distance. He gets excited and wants to see what it is. But by moving, he accidentally ends up hanging himself and he struggles with the rope until it breaks. Hank quickly goes to the body and checks if it's alive. He tries to revive it by pushing on its chest, but the only thing that happens is the body lets out gas because it's decaying. Hank feels let down. He tells the body that when he tried to hang himself, he hoped to see his life pass before his eyes and find some purpose in it. But all he saw was this decaying man who keeps letting out gas as he talks. Hank decides to take the belt from the body and try to hang himself again, but he keeps getting distracted by the body. The waves carry the body away and its gas makes it move on the water. Hank gets an idea, runs to the body, ties a rope around its neck, and climbs on top of it to ride it across the sea like a jet ski. The speed eventually makes him fall into the ocean, and he passes out, only to wake up hours later on a mainland beach. He finds a sealed bag of cheese puffs, which gives him hope of finding people. He takes out his cell phone and turns it on, but there's no signal, so he turns it off again to save the low battery. It's time for him to go into the forest and look for help, but he feels bad about leaving the body behind after it helps him. So Hank starts dragging it with him, putting up with the sound of the constant gas. As they go deeper into the forest, Hank starts finding trash left by people, which means they're going in the right direction. He keeps a jacket and a sports magazine, and he puts a cork he finds up the body's rear so it won't let out gas anymore. When it starts raining at night, they hide in a cave, and Hank only leaves occasionally to drink from a plastic cup that he's left outside to collect water. Sadly, Hank can't sleep. He can't remember the words to his mom's song, so he starts making up his own. Eventually, he falls asleep, not realizing that rainwater is falling into the body's mouth all night. When he wakes up, he sees a raccoon touching the body with its mouth. He tries to catch it to eat it, but the animal runs away. He feels frustrated because he's not making any progress in finding help. He decides to leave the body this time, but changes his mind when he sees water coming out of the body's mouth. He fills his cup with it and forces himself to drink it, ignoring the horrible taste. When he needs more water, he just presses on the body's chest. After the body lets out a lot of water, it starts making noises with its mouth. Inspired by these noises, Hank decides to name the body Manny. He moves Manny's mouth and presses his chest, trying to get him to talk, but only mumbles come out and Hank gives up. But then Manny starts talking on his own using real words and even singing the lyrics Hank made up. Hank gets scared and punches him before running away. He comes back with a big stick in case he needs to protect himself. Manny can't move, only his mouth can, so Hank is safe. He's not sure if this is a miracle or if he's just seeing things because he's hungry, but he's glad to have someone with him now. Even if Manny can't remember his past life and doesn't understand simple things, like home or life. Hank tries to feed him cheese puff dust to see if it can bring back some memories, but it doesn't work. So Hank starts using the garbage he finds in the forest to teach Manny about how people live. He even makes toys out of it. Manny's simple and honest understanding of complex ideas makes Hank rethink what he thinks is right behavior. It also makes him confess that he got lost after he left home. Manny thinks that Hank wants to find love, but he left because no one loved him, which Manny thinks is confusing. They leave the cave so Hank can try to get a signal on his phone again. While he's walking around the forest, he finds some berries and eats them, but he throws up a few minutes later. As Hank is occupied, Manny's attention is drawn to the images of bikini-clad women in the Sports Limited magazine. However, he fails to grasp the significance of these images. To help him understand, Hank starts to weave a fictitious romantic tale about the woman featured on the page. This excites Manny so much that it causes him to have an erection, but it disappears when the magazine is taken away. Hank gets the idea to use this to guide their way through the forest, because it will always point back towards the magazine. Hank has to keep telling Manny more about the girl in the magazine to keep him excited, but at some point the conversation moves to how Hank was traumatized by his parents when he got caught touching himself. A short while later, as they continue their journey through the forest, Hank stumbles over a large mound of waste, causing him to fall and inadvertently switch on the phone in his pocket. Concurrently, a menacing growl echoes from the depths of the woodland. Given the size of the waste pile, Hank surmises 
realizes that a large and potentially dangerous creature lurks nearby. As the growling intensifies, indicating the creature's approach, Hank attempts to pull Manny to safety, but they both trip and tumble down a slope. In the process, Hank's phone slips out of his pocket, revealing the lock screen image to Manny, a picture of a stunning woman. Hank swiftly retrieves the phone, switching it off to conserve power, before resuming his efforts to navigate the forest and find sustenance. Throughout this, Manny persistently requests to view the picture again, convinced that the phone is his. He suggests to Hank that seeing the woman in the picture might trigger his memory, which could, in turn, aid them in locating civilization. Hank agrees and uses discarded trash and foliage to fashion a costume resembling the woman in the picture. Initially, Hank is apprehensive, but Manny's compliment on his appearance and improved speech encourages Hank to fully commit to the plan. Utilizing additional trash and natural materials, Hank constructs a makeshift bus and instructs Manny on how to converse with women. He shares with Manny his genuine feelings for the woman in the picture, making Manny believe these sentiments are his own. Hank, who had never mustered the courage to speak to her and only managed to take her picture, doesn't want Manny to repeat his mistake. The plan starts to show promise when Manny recalls the woman's name to be Sarah Johnson, instilling hope in Hank. Hank continues to create scenarios to educate Manny about dating, movies, and socializing, always impersonating Sarah. These simulated dates foster a bond between them, and they even begin to hold hands. One evening, Manny chokes on some food he was eating. Hank employs the Heimlich maneuver and uncovers a unique skill of Manny's, the ability to propel objects at great distances using his mouth. Hank crafts a hook, and using Manny's newfound ability, shoots it attached to a rope, enabling them to ascend back into the forest. The duo resumes their exploration, seeking help and pausing only at nightfall to construct additional sets for their pretend dates. Hank begins to utilize Manny's abilities in other ways, such as using his projectile ability as a weapon for hunting or even as a shower, and his rigid limbs prove useful for chopping wood. One evening, they stumble upon a bottle of vodka in the trash and decide to throw a party, getting intoxicated in the process. Manny confesses to Sarah that she is his chosen one and expresses his desire to make her happy. They share an intimate moment and nearly kiss, but Hank interrupts before things become uncomfortable. Eventually, they encounter a cliff with a river below. The only means of crossing is via some pipelines that could serve as a bridge. Despite the inherent danger, Hank verifies the route by activating Manny's compass using Sarah's picture. Confirming this to be the only way, Hank secures Manny to his back and begins the precarious journey across the bridge by crawling. Hank is already anxious, and his mood deteriorates further due to Manny's incessant chatter about the awkwardness between them since the night they almost kissed, a topic Hank prefers to avoid. Suddenly, a section of the pipes gives way, causing them to slip. They manage to cling onto the bridge their clothing snagging on a piece of metal preventing their fall. In that instant, the metal piece that was their lifeline gives way, and they plunge into the river. Hank is a capable swimmer, but Manny starts to sink. Hank dives after him, their pretend dates flashing in his mind. He plants a kiss on Manny underwater, eliciting a smile from him. To escape the river, Hank removes a cork he had placed in Manny's rear, allowing Manny's gas to propel them to the surface. They land on the riverbank, and Hank once again utilizes Manny's unique ability, this time to shoot the hook with his mouth and return to the pipelines. They successfully traverse to the other side, and as darkness descends, Hank ignites a fire using Manny's gas. Hank explains to Manny that societal norms discourage people from passing gas in the presence of others, helping Manny understand why he never does it in front of Hank. Manny perceives society as a restrictive place that inhibits fun and suggests they could continue their pretend dates in the forest. Hank is fond of the idea, but first, he takes a moment for a personal break. Upon activating his phone, Hank discovers he has signal reception. He browses social media and sees that he's been obsessively following Sarah, who is actually married and has a daughter, Preston and Chrissy. Overwhelmed with guilt, Hank decides to reveal the truth to Manny. He admits that the phone belongs to him and that Sarah is a woman he encountered daily on the bus, fell in love with, but never had the courage to approach. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted when Manny alerts Hank of a nearby bear, prompting Hank to drop the phone and prepare Manny to use his unique ability. However, upon seeing the the picture of Sarah with her husband, Manny loses all hope, and his special ability ceases to function. The bear manages to injure Hank's leg as he attempts to drag himself and Manny to safety. The bear is undeterred by the flaming branch Hank wields in defense. Instead, Hank places it near Manny's rear, 
triggering a release of gas that propels them upwards, landing them atop a tree. From this elevated vantage point, they can see a path and observe passing cars, which excites Hank, but not Manny. Manny begins to weep and philosophize about the suppression of thoughts, expressing a wish for death. Hank is bombarded with flashbacks, which he blames on Manny, leaving him emotionally shaken. He loses his grip and falls from the tree, exacerbating his leg injury. The bear seizes the opportunity to bite Hank's leg and starts dragging him away. Convinced of his impending demise, Hank tells Manny that one day their bodies will decompose together, which he finds beautiful. This sentiment inspires Manny to act independently. He falls from the tree and releases gas onto their campfire, creating a large flame that frightens the bear away. After expressing his gratitude to Manny for saving him, Hank loses consciousness. Hank regains consciousness in the morning to discover Manny pulling him towards civilization. They emerge from the forest directly into Sarah's backyard, not by chance, but because Manny wants Hank to share with Sarah all the lessons he's imparted. Fear grips Hank, and he attempts to flee, but Manny prevents him. Their scuffle on the lawn draws the attention of Chrissy, who finds their behavior peculiar and bombards them with uncomfortable questions. Manny clarifies that they were stranded in the forest, are now seeking assistance, and are trying to win over the girl. He demonstrates some of his unique abilities, which only serve to frighten her and bring her to tears. Sarah, alerted by her daughter's cries, comes outside and encounters the two men. She perceives them as potential threats. However, Chrissy quickly informs her mother that they are in need of help, prompting Sarah to retreat indoors and dial 911. Once she's gone, Manny admits his discomfort with their judgmental gazes and acknowledges that he can't continue in this manner, given his status as a corpse. So after asking Hank to never tell Sarah about his feelings, he dies. Cops and an ambulance arrive a couple of hours later, while the paramedics take care of Hank. The police officers check Manny's body and come to the conclusion that he wasn't killed by Hank. While all of that is happening, the news reporter interviews Hank, even though he looks exhausted and calls him Manny, but he corrects her, and that triggers Hank, who goes to get Manny back from the body bag. Hank drags the body away, and they fall down the hill while everyone rushes after them, including Chrissy. Hank is dragging Manny's body across the river, and that's when the police and Sarah find all the weird things he's made in the forest. Hank drags Manny to the beach and tells him he just wanted to give him everything he deserves in life while everyone watches. Sarah asks about the shrines, and Hank tells her they did it together, and it was beautiful. This creeps out Sarah as she walks away, and the police get closer and arrest Hank while he keeps talking to the body. Hank then farts on the police officer and stands up to tell everyone that it was him who passed gas, and the police take him away while he keeps farting, but this time it wasn't him, it was Manny. Hank goes to him for one last time as everyone looks on, whispers something in his ear, and sends him off to ride into the ocean one final time. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.